how do you explain gravity? Gravity goes right back to the Planck particle, I think. Now, there's a lot of theories out there about gravity. But if this book is 99% Planck particle and, you know, whatever paper's made of... You but know, you just mean Planck. ether. You could say ether. I mean, we but could do, use do you think term. it is Planck particle? I think, yeah. It has okay. to be the smallest possible material substance that nature allows. Because if, if it's not the smallest then you're going to have something there between the particles that can't be nothing, has to be something. So now you're going to have to go back to the smallest possible particle and the smallest possible distance. This is all already known in quantum mechanics, okay? So if everything is filled with Planck particles, then if you have matter made up of, you know, um, protons, neutrons, electrons, and that can exist in a Planck particle medium, then it's going to create a vacuum. Okay? Do you need me to elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah, we'll explain. Are you saying okay. we're being pulled down by vacuum forces? or? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's a vacuum force because you have matter t impeding on the Planck particle, and now the Planck particle isn't at its optimal density. If it's not at an optimal density it's going, and nature abhors a vacuum, then it's going to try to compensate for that uh, lack of optimal density and start pulling whatever's out there. It's going to Was start it, pulling. So do you think that there is a firmament and there's no space then? Uh, the firm, see, now this is another issue about the firmament that we need to know, which is a lot of the theories are based on the fact that the firmament is a solid thing. That's why you have the picture of the dome. That's what you get in Genesis chapter one, verses six to nine. That it's a solid thing. Yeah, it looks like a glass barrier, right? Yeah. Figuratively. Yeah. But whatever it is, it could be gold. Who knows? It's solid. Radiation. <laughs> well, that's not solid. No, you're, say you're saying it, the presumption is that it's solid. No, because that's what the Hebrew word means. It, oh, it, really? I mean, that's why, you get, oh, yeah. that's why you get the word firmament. It's firm. Yeah, okay? but in that's Greek, it it's stereoma, which means solid. Yeah. But there's another facet to this Hebrew word, rakia. And you get that in the second part of Genesis 1, when it starts talking about the celestial bodies. It says, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars, and put them in the firmament. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, how can that be if it's solid? They're wrong. They're... <laughs> no, you got two meanings for the firmament. You got one that's solid, and you got one that's ethereal. Mm. And that's where the celestial bodies can fit in. And if you follow the meaning of firmament, the rakia or raka is another derivative of it throughout the Old Testament. You see those two meanings. So let, let me try and get the uh, gravity explanation then. So, well, gravity is fake, and this oh. is how we know because <laughs> it's all buoyancy and density. Because uh, uh, this I can prove. Why does a balloon float, Tim? Is Archimedes' that law of displacement, which was discovered long before gravity, right? I mean, oh, yeah, but we put the little g in there now. So, so because gravity is means it comes from gravitas, which means heavy. So it just means that objects are heavy. They have a weight. Um, as to what causes objects to have weight, that's the real question, right? So, right, so the, the, the issue then would be, I'm trying to understand, and maybe I'm getting it wrong. The Earth is massive, and with, with Planck particles occupying 99% of space, there is a massive vacuum that is the Earth pulling everything towards it. Well, to the, balance. the Earth also has Planck particles in it. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the so yeah. the Earth is effectively this gigantic structure with massive vacuum force pulling everything around it to it. That's right. That's right. And you what's actually... what's the what's the conventional gravity theory a theory of gravity? So and, and to be clear, I'm not a physicist. I'm I'm just an amateur astronomer who who enjoys looking at the stars. Wait, are you a doctor? I'm a doctor of neuroscience. And we'll say doctor, but shh, <laughs> keep that part quiet. You're a doctor. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know much about theoretical physics and and uh, about you know uh, what causes mass to have you know uh, gravity. Um, that's not that's outside of my wheelhouse, to be honest. Uh, but well, it's the theory of relativity. It says that gravity is the bending and warping of space. It's the effect of the bending and warping of space time, and that it displaces the space time, causes a gravity well, and basically objects fall inside this well. Back in the day, it was Newtonian, which is that matter inherently has some property that make that pulls things to it. And actually, Newton said that he couldn't understand it. It must be God doing it. 
<laughs> you know, and, like, and most did. people won't yeah. talk about that. He just straight up said, God must be doing it. He threw his hands up. He said there had to be an ether if it existed because there had to be mutual contact between the bodies and stuff like that. But this is this is interesting because people will say, like, hey, stupid flat earth or what's gravity, right? But the mainstream model doesn't have a viable model for yeah, gravity. Right, it's don't. not it's not even remotely close. Is, is, is the flat earth uh, – I've read this, and, it's, and it may not be the actual one, but what I've read was that the earth is moving upwards. No, no, no. Total straw, man. Total straw. <laughs> insane straw. But, but Austin, you, you don't believe in relativity, right? I mean, you don't believe that the sun is 93 million miles away. You don't believe that you're, – You're conflating things. So I believe in the principle of relativity – I don't believe in the theory of relativity. It's ridiculous. What's the difference? What do you mean? Yeah, what's meaning that things are relative. Like I can be moving in a car and it <coughs> looks see. like the tree's moving. Obviously, that principle is real long before Einstein was even a thing. But the theory of relativity is As a matter of fact, Bell Bellar Bellarmine used that against Galileo. The uh, theory of rel yeah. the principle of relativity. Principle, exactly. Yeah. So that the but gravity doesn't work at all in the mainstream model. It's such a misnomer. In 1933. Fritz Zwicky looked at a coma cluster. So it was like a cluster of galaxies all together. And to keep the galaxies together, there had to be a certain amount of gravitational force, right? So gravitational field had to be certain strength. And it only had 1% of the mass needed based on the gravitational prediction. Gravity was off by 99%. To this day, it's off. It Dark matter is what they called it. At first, they called it missing mass. Then they just yeah. plugged in the, the value to fix it, and now it's called dark matter, completely undefined. It's just invisible, effectively, is what dark matter Yeah, it's is. like we can't detect what it is. We don't know what it is, but it clearly has some kind of gra gravitational effect on— yeah, yeah. We can see it, gravitational it, it, lensing in, right. in galactic clusters. We can see that, you know, we what expect that— What does that have to do they, with dark matter, though? Because gal galactic clusters have a lot of dark matter, and, and so if you, if you look what at What is dark matter? If, if you look at the if you look at galactic clusters, they seem to be lensing light. And if you look at if you tally up the mass that you expect to see in those galaxies based on the amount of light that you're getting from the galaxies, it doesn't add up. It doesn't seem. Well, it doesn't add up according to what? So uh, Wikipedia, our best friend, says dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter that does not interact with light or other electromagnetic radiation. It, it is uh, dark matter is implied by gravitational effects, which cannot be explained by general rel relativity unless more matter is present than can be observed. Now, that's fascinating because that sounds to me. And I hate to say it, but it sounds like they have this theory and they go, OK, well, the theory can't explain this thing. So something must be there then I guess. Exactly. It's almost religious. So obviously but I'm not saying it's wrong. We it's it's like Sudoku. Right. We we figure this is what's there. There is thing here. You know, we look at the numbers and we say two, five or six must be in this space. So my, my point is simply. It I, I think it. Obviously, the, the point of dark matter is that we don't know, and based on what we think about general relativity, we are plugging something in we've not yet discovered. Well, and it's actually, been a, it over a century almost. Further, it goes back further than that. The What they're saying is that F equals MA, which was Newton's formula, okay? Einstein's formula is G equals 8 pi tau, which is almost identical to F equals MA. Thanks for watching this clip from the Culture War podcast. We're live every Friday, 10 a.m. to noon. So subscribe and come hang out.